Welcome back to the Crochet Crown as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Checker Crochet Baby Blanket just like you see here. This is a really neat concept and you're thinking that you're going to change a lot of colors but you're not. So in today's pattern I'm going to show you how to work this pattern. It's really quite simple. I'm going to break it down just in case you want to make a larger size and also I'm going to show you the little bit of a secret that's happening on the side of the blanket that you really can't see and you can get away with as well. So let's take a look at this further. So here's our yarn of choice. It's a Bernat Baby Blanket Tiny and it's a smaller version of Bernat Blanket. It's much smaller here. You can make cl baby clothing with this and you can make really nice baby blankets with this without the weight of the regular ba uh, Bernat Blanket yarn. So this is a really neat concept. You need three different colors for this and you'll see that here that it has the breakdown. So you have two balls of the Polar Bear. You have two balls of Gray Owl and two balls of Seedling in order to make this whole thing. The baby blanket is approximately 40 inches square. Today's pattern I'm going to show how to break down this pattern because there's a diagram that it's included on page number two. So let's flip the page and show you that. So here we have is the blown up diagram. It is on page number two just like you see here with the written set of instructions. So I've blown it up here just to make it easier for you to follow and I've done a sample just like you see. So here's a blown up diagram of it. There's a matter of a repeat pattern and the repeat pattern is in multiples of six plus five. So you're thinking to yourself and I thought to myself it's gonna be in multiples of three because you see three here and then three and then three and then three and etc. But it's actually multiples of six plus five and the reason for it is that you have to get through a total of six before it can repeat itself because of the way that it's checkering out on each other. So if you do multiples of three you may have a, an odd number coming out to the end. So you need to have multiples of six plus five. On the very sides here you'll see that the yarn is carrying up quite nicely. It's kind of blended in with it. There is no border with this. That doesn't mean you can't put one on here. You have to choose the right color if you're going to do that. I've also changed the very ending row so that the very ending row is nice and tight because the way that it's written here is that you'll have a loop here that will show and if you want a nice closed in look I'll cover that as well how to close that off so it looks very similar to the very to the way that you get started. So let me tell you a little bit more about this pattern and then we're going to dive in. So as we get started on this pattern you're going to notice that it's kind of really fiddly in the very beginning. So just the first few rows is kind of fiddly in your hands but once you get a little bit of a, a rose in, in place it gets easier to hold because you're jumping around on this yarn. So the nice thing about it is that you're using the same color across each one. So if you're using the white, the white is just buried underneath the yellow here. It's still there but it's buried and then it appears again. So there's no carrying of yarn up underneath anything. It's a matter of a, uh, three double crochets and then chain three, three double crochets and chain three. Now what makes this really quite nice is that because if I pull it apart do you see how the yellow is going across underneath these stitches? You can do that. You can see it if you really pull it apart. So it's add, adding a bit of a thickness to the blanket without being too overly heavy and I think that's a really kind of a cool thing. So here in the diagram what we have is that we have sets of three. So you have three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, chain three and then three double crochet. So the, the th three chains here equals a double crochet. So in the blue row when you go up so you're gonna be starting on this side is that you'll chain up three which equals your chain three and then when you go to double crochet you're gonna double crochet back down into the starting chain and gonna cover right over, over top of these uh, three chains here and then you're gonna chain three and then do the same thing. So right where you chain three the next time you come back into this in row number three you're gonna go up over top of that chain three and bury it and that's what gives it the look of the checkerboard is that colors are just over top of each other to create the same look. So you can do any kind of colors that you want to. So let's uh, begin to work on this pattern together and I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of getting started. So let's get started today. You could either chain 155 to match it so that you get your 40 inches. If not you can just chain in multiples of six and then add five at the very end. So what you need to do is that you need a, uh, a size four millimeter a G crochet hook in order to play. Just for uh, tutorial reasons I'm using a four and a half millimeter size uh, and G as well just to, just to have it a little bit of a bigger hook. So obviously the bigger the hook the more yarn you will use. So let's uh, insert our hook into the slip uh, to the slip knot and let's begin. So you can chain either 155 or you can do multiples of six. So I'm gonna do multiples of six just as a small sample. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five and six. Is it big enough? Yes or no? If not just continue again. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Big enough? Yes or no? If not continue. One, two, three, four, five 
and six and when you're satisfied with it at the very end of your chain and I'm gonna say I'm satisfied now I'm gonna add an additional five so it's multiples of chain uh, of six plus five. So one, two, three, four, and five and we keep this color into play and then we begin row number one together. So to begin row number one we need to count back to the fourth chain. So in order to make that work. So we're just count it back. So one, two, three, and four and go to the fourth and double crochet into position. So the chains that you just skipped equals a double crochet and then you just put a double crochet in there. So that gives you two and then you're gonna double crochet into the next chain. And so then you begin to do the same stitch work going across. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. This will get buried in the future and then you're going to skip three chains. So one, two, three. Go to the fourth one over and double crochet. You can always fake it or make it with Bernat Blanket. That's one thing I love about this particular yarn. So okay. So you've just jumped over and then you're gonna double crochet the next two chains as well. Cause it's nice and fluffy. It really hides errors that you may do. Not saying that you're going to. Just saying that you, if you did you probably could fake it or make it right. So you just continue to do that same thing going all the way across your chain. So chain three. So one, two, three. Skip three chains here on here. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and go into the fourth again for three double crochets in a row and then chain three and then the next three are double crochets and do that all the way across. Let me just meet you at the end of this when you get there and I'll see you there in just a moment. So here we have the final and what we have is we have three double crochets in a row so the chain three counted as one and then we skip three and then three, skip three and three and then at the very end you will have a three in a row. So the very final one that we do is something that you have to get used to doing for this particular pattern. So you're gonna double crochet as normal but you're gonna stop when there's two loops on the hook and what I want you to do is that I want you to grab the another yarn color instead. So leave an extra long tail and you can bury that in later and uh, just using your uh, bearing techniques and then just put it onto the hook and pull through and then that gets that color ready for the next time. So we're going to drop then the gold color here. We're gonna leave it there and we're gonna continue on then with the green right here. So let's uh, start off with the green and we're just gonna turn our work and to begin what we have to do is that the double crochets are gonna fall into place where there's chain threes and right where there's double crochets in place you're gonna chain three. So that means that when we start we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. See that carries you over top of the other double crochets that are there and then what you're going to do is that you're going to play within this chain down here, not this one and you're going to double crochet and you're gonna wrap the hook going into that chain way down there and again I promised you that the first part of this is really fiddly but it gets really easy once you get started. So then you're just going to wrap the yarn over top of the other chain that's there. So just as you normally would and pull through and you're just double crocheting right up over top of that and that forces that chain three that you had to sit down underneath. So then you move to the next one and that's two rows below and you double crochet right up over top of that chain three that exists. And then you do and there's only three in a row right so you do all three. So now the double crochets are here. So you're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. So you jump over those and then you start in this chain down here right where I'm pinching. So then you just wrap the hook and just double crochet into that chain going up over top of the other chain. Okay. And you continue on in that same manner going all the way across. So you're creating new chain three spaces that will get covered in the next row that you do. So there's always gonna be these chain three spaces happening. So then chain three and then you are going to then just jump over and you are going to then come into the next chain down And to finish off this one here 
all you just need to do, I'm just grabbing the other colors just coming in line. So to finish off this row here, you already have three double crochets in the end. So all you need to do is chain three. And then when you go to insert this one into the very first one, you're going to insert in and then you're going to drop that color and you're gonna grab your new color that you've been seeing popping through. So it's been the white that wants to come up. So the white is gonna come up, create a slip knot first and a long tail. You'll hide that in later and then just put that onto the hook and pull through and through. So then the white is then ready for next time. So you're going to turn your work and then carry on with the white. So get the green out of your way and just only use the white going forward and then we're gonna carry on going across as you see it. So you're going to let the other tails hang off. So there's really there's only one green that leads to the ball. The white one here is just the end that we started with. So to start this one here, you'll notice that there's a space right away. So we're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet. And the next two in a row will be into this gold one down here. So just wrap the hook and going right into the gold and just go right up over top of that green one that you see. And that'll hide that green. So you do that one plus the next one. And then you chain three. So see how there's double crochet there? So you're just gonna chain three which jumps over top and then you are going to then come into the next one here. But this time now it's no longer working into the chains. You're working into the three gold double crochets that are here. Right here and you go up over top of that chain three which is in the green. So it's a great way of hiding colors for this without actually having to do graph GAN work. Um, the only thing that you gotta watch out for is that every now and then you just have to make sure your yarn's not getting tangled uh, from your yarn balls because they you are using three at the same time. So chain three and then coming into the next gold. And do all three of them like that. So as you get back to the other side here, what's gonna happen is that you're going to bring back gold once again and the gold is already sitting there waiting for you to grab. So chain three. So go into the final three golds. So one. Let me try that again. Go into the final three. My tension got a little loose there. And go right into the final one and what are you not gonna do? You're not gonna finish it. You're gonna let it hold and then you're going to bring back now the gold and you're just gonna lightly just kinda push it up okay and then just pull it through. So it's already sitting part of your project. Just tighten it up a little bit and then turn your work and then just drop then the white. Let the white go out of the way and then you're gonna carry on using gold going up to the next one. So as you begin again, you're going to start it and you're gonna notice three double crochets in a row. So that tells you immediately you're gonna have to start with a chain three. So one, two and three and just carry over and just start the first one right over here right where I'm pitching and you'll put your three double crochets into this green section. See how easy that is? So it's just a matter of identifying how, how you get started and because it's now getting more and more into your hands, you'll find that you'll speed up as well. I, I know I did. So chain three one, two and three and then just jump over and just keep filling in the spots. So right where the chain threes already exist, you just keep on going. Now the pattern is written so that you finish off and you have these chain three spaces at the end. I would not do that because the fact is is that when you started it, you don't have that down here at the very base. So I'm gonna teach you how to finish that off so that you don't have any chain three spaces because I can imagine uh, somebody leaving a complaint that you know the, that there's gonna be loops at the end of a blanket and for baby fingers and etc. So I can see that being a concern and I think it's probably pretty valid too. So just to finish off, you just chain three because you started off with the chain three on one side. That's why you did the chain uh, multiples of six, uh, six plus five and then you just go into the top of the first chain three here and then just pull Okay, so just pull like that and then just grab the next color. So the next one will be green. Okay, so always just look for it which color is next. So it was gold, green, white, gold, green, white. So just turning it. So then as you start you see that there's a chain three space. Okay, so just carry on. So you're just gonna chain three. So then you know that you're gonna have to put in your double crochets right into this first one. So just go jumping down. 
and then chain three to move across. So one, two, three, and then continuing on. So just do the same thing going across and when I come back I'm gonna show you how to, what I would do to finish this off so that you don't end up with a chain three space at the very final so you have a nice closed in blanket for your baby. So you're just gonna grow this to the size that you wanna grow it and then in the very final let's just say that we're gonna do our final. This is not per, as per the pattern. This is a, an, an ad lib to prevent that chain three space at the end. So I'm just gonna grab up my white and finish off this row as I normally would. I'm gonna show you how to weave in the tails too. So what I would do in the very final round or the very final row, do you see how you have like double crochets and then you have appears to be yellow and then double crochets again. So what I would do is chain up one and right where there's double crochets just double crochet or sorry just single crochet into that space into those stitches right. So then that covers you there and then you go down and jump down. Okay so you'll just jump down do your double crochets as normal. So this is preventing you from creating any more chain three spaces. Okay for the exterior of the baby blanket just in case that's a concern for you. So then what happens here is that you just carry on. So right where there's double crochets you were just going to single crochet instead instead of doing a chain three. And you're gonna do that all the way across just like that. When I come back I'll have that done for you and then I'll show you how to weave in the tails just in case you need a refresher. So as I come all the way to the end I'm just doing this technique of just making sure that the blanket is nice and close. If you wanna do a border that's up to you. Just uh, do a single crochet border and then put three um, single crochets in each corner if you want to do that. So now that let's just say I'm done and I'm just gonna trim off my yarn just enough that I can put a darning needle through it and I'm just gonna pull through. So with the darning needle this stuff's really easy to hide in because it's nice and fluffy but just put it onto a darning needle and then get rid of those loose loose ends. So don't just tuck it just glide it up underneath the stitches and if you know me then you just glide it through three times. So just glide once Okay, just make sure you don't have extra tension and then go back a, th a second time and a third time once again. And so then that will permanently be in position. So that third time is the charm, it's the secret. And so you're gonna look through your blanket and you're gonna notice that you have tail ends. So when you have it starting you'll have to hide those in but all the ones that you finished off, okay, so this is still attached to the ball is this I'm gonna trim it off and I'm going to hide in that particular piece. So you're gonna have these tails left at the end. Um, just three tails left um, because you have three balls to work with. And so right where the color ended I want you to go in and keep it with that same color only. So don't mix it. So just going in one, going into that same color for twice and three times is a charm. So just go in again three times staying within that color and you're done. So the ones that you carried up the sides you'll you'll kind of see it a little bit but nothing crazy so I gotta hide in this as a starting but you'll see it a little bit so that you can see the green carried up but it kind of blends really nicely and again if you wanna do a, a single crochet border you can hide that in as well. So this is how you do this particular blanket. It's actually a pretty easy idea and once you get used to it once you get used to it uh, you'll see that your stitch work is gonna look pretty amazing and it's really quite easy. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.